Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Crock-Pot Express Crock Multi Cooker. The unit measures about 13 inches tall and 14 inches across. It is a big unit and will take up some space on your countertop. The cord is about 26 inches long and plugs into the bottom of the base. The control panel has eight pre-programmed settings. Meat stew, beans chili, rice risotto, yogurt, poultry, dessert, soup, and multigrain. There's a cooking guide in the instruction manual that gives you the settings for each program. For example, if you press the poultry button, the food will be cooked at high pressure for 15 minutes. You notice high is lit up here. If you want to adjust the pressure, just press the pressure adjust button and it'll go too low. You can adjust the time from 15 minutes to 2 hours by pressing the plus or minus buttons. Then press the start stop button to begin cooking. After any cycle is finished, the unit automatically goes to keep warm mode. The slow cook function does not use pressure and the steam release valve should be in the release position. It's like using a regular slow cooker. You can slow cook using the high temp setting for 2 to 4 hours or the low temp setting for 6 to 8 hours. Remember there's very little evaporation during slow cooking so you may not need a lot of liquid. With the steam function put about 8 ounces of water in the pot and use the included rack to steam your food. Heat will be displayed on the screen when the unit comes up to pressure. When the pressure is reached the timer will count down. Once the cycle is finished it'll beep and the unit switches to keep warm mode. With steaming quick release is best otherwise food will be overcooked. The brown saute function works like a regular pot on the stove. Don't use the lid. Choose brown saute and you can adjust the time and temperature. When you press start the unit heats up. Once it's finished heating the timer counts down. You can brown meat or vegetables before cooking a stew or curry. With the rice function always rinse your raw rice first drain it and put it in the pot. The ratio is one cup of raw rice to one and a half cups of water. After it's cooked use the natural pressure release method. It's best not to leave the rice in keep warm mode for a long time as it could get dry. The delay function lets you set the time to cook later. If you're using any function and you want to cancel just press the start stop button and choose another function. After your food is finished cooking the unit automatically switches to keep warm mode for a maximum of four hours. After four hours the unit turns off. Lock and unlock are clearly marked on the lid. Just turn and pull up the lid. Lift the cooking pot out. It's non-stick. Use heat proof plastic or wooden spoon so you don't scratch the surface. There's a max line marked right here. It's two-thirds full so don't fill above that. If you're using foods that expand when cooking like rice or beans, don't fill the pot more than halfway. For the unit to pressure cook you'll need at least 8 ounces of water in the pot. This is the condensation collector in the back of the unit. Pull it right off to empty after you cook or for cleaning. It snaps right back into place. Included is a steaming rack, plastic spoon, instruction manual, and recipe book. There are recipes for appetizers, making stock, chili, yogurt, oatmeal, beef and chicken recipes, and desserts. There's a useful steaming chart in the instruction manual with the type of food, amount, amount of water, and the cooking time. Inside the lid is a sealing gasket. When you first get the unit, remove the sealing gasket. It just pulls right out and wash it in warm soapy water. Also wash the lid, dry everything, and then push the sealing gasket back in. The steam release valve cover can be pulled out for cleaning. It pops right back in. This is the steam release valve. It's supposed to be loose. This should be clear of any debris before cooking. Before pressure cooking make sure to move the steam release valve to the seal position so it can build pressure. This is the seal position. The bobber valve and lid lock pin just press them to make sure that they move freely. Generally with any pressure cooker all the parts have to be clean and clear so the unit can work properly. Cleaning is easy after cooking most foods. Foods that can cause clogging are things that foam up like dried beans, split peas, and oatmeal. Cleaning takes more time after such foods. After any cycle is finished pressure has to be released before opening the lid. There are two ways to release pressure. First the natural release. After the cycle is finished wait 10 minutes and then move the steam release valve to release. You should do this with an oven mitt or tongs because this will be hot. The second method is quick release. After the cooking cycle ends move the steam release valve to release immediately and steam will come out of the valve. Don't use quick release with soups, stocks, casseroles, or rice. When the steam stops coming out you can open the lid. 
First I'll try the steam function. I'll pour in 8 ounces of water. Put the steaming rack in. And about 1 pound of trimmed fresh green beans. Put the lid on, unlock it. Make sure the valve is turned to seal. The beans should cook in 2-3 to three minutes according to the steaming chart in the booklet. I'll press steam and adjust the time to 3 minutes and then I'll press the start button. The unit needs to gain pressure. During that time, heat will be displayed. When the unit reaches pressure, the heat will disappear and the time will count down. Pressure has been reached so the display shows 3 minutes and it'll start to count down. The cycle's ended and now it's gone into keep warm mode. With steamed food you want to use the quick release method. Just going to use a pair of tongs. It sounds like all the pressure's been released. Make sure to press the start stop button to turn the unit off. Now we can open the lid. When you open the lid there should be no resistance. There is a slot in the handle so you can put the lid right in the handle which is convenient. So you don't have to look for a place for the hot lid. The beans look cooked. Let me take one out. It's perfectly cooked. Now the steaming chart in the book had said two cups of water for one pound of beans. I use only one cup and that's more than enough. If you use the two cups, I think the water would come above the rack and your beans would be sitting in the water. Next we'll try the rice function. This is two cups of long grain rice measured out in a regular dry measuring cup. The two cups is about 12.5 ounces or 370 grams. Wash and drain the rice. Put the drained rice in the pot. Now I'm going to add three cups of water. Three cups measured in a measuring cup. 24 ounces of water. Put the pot in the unit. Lock it. Turn the valve to seal. Press rice. The default is 12 minutes and I'm going to press start. After 10 minutes the display shows 12 and it's going to start to count down. The cycle has ended, the unit beeped, now the display shows zero. It's going to start to count up since it's gone into keep warm mode. We'll let the pressure release naturally, which means waiting for 10 minutes and turning the valve to release. The total time to cook the rice was 22 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, now we can release the pressure. Press the start stop button. Always stir the rice to distribute any remaining moisture. Nothing is stuck. The rice looks well cooked. Sometimes in pressure cookers or rice cookers the rice can turn out a little dry. But the three cups of water I added was really perfect for how I like my rice. This is not dry at all. It's a little moist. Next I'll make a curry. Always make sure the bottom of the pot is dry before you put it into the unit. Press brown saute and it's at high temp already. The default for brown saute is 30 minutes. Press start and it's heating. Now the display shows 30 and it'll count down. So the pot is hot and we can saute. Add a few tablespoons of oil. Add my whole spices. Now I'll add my onion and green chilies, a little salt. Since we're not using the lid, it's just like cooking with a regular pot on the stove. The onions are golden brown. That took about 15 minutes. I'll add my ginger garlic paste, ground turmeric, chopped tomatoes.
salt, and the lamb. This is a little over three pounds of lamb. And I'll add my garam masala. Add some water. I'm adding a cup and a half of water. Everything in here has almost reached the half mark line. A little bit less. Now I'm going to press start stop. Then I'm going to change the function to meat. Lock the lid. Press meat stew. The pressure is already at high, which is what I want. And I'm going to adjust the time to cook for 30 minutes. Press start. Make sure the valve is turned to seal. The unit has reached pressure, and now the display shows 30 minutes. It's going to start counting down. In general, to reach pressure, it takes about 10 minutes. We'll let the pressure release naturally. It's been 10 minutes. Here is our lamb curry. The meat is nicely cooked. If you want to cook the gravy down, just hit the brown saute and it'll heat and reduce the liquid. This is a big pressure cooker. There's almost three and a half pounds of meat in here. It's bubbling away, you can reduce the liquid. I used one and a half cups of water for the three and a half pounds of meat. I think you could even get away with one cup. The lamb curry is thick and absolutely delicious. If you want to see the recipe, I've uploaded it on my Anita Cooks channel. There's a link in the description below. You saw how the crock pot pressure cooker performed on steaming the beans, cooking rice, and using the meat saute function for the lamb curry. If you want to try out this cooker, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review useful. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.